Last year's Supreme Court ruling on marriage equality was received with mixed reactions by Christians. Also in 2015, the Episcopal Church became the second major Christian denomination to fully embrace marriage equality. Discussion of LGBTQ inclusion in the church will continue for years. That's why Episcopal Church of the Advent in Chicago is holding an ongoing discussion about Matthew Vine's book, God and the Gay Christian. To learn more, let's welcome Todd Van Alstein, a staff member at Church of the Advent and trustee for the Episcopal Diocese of Chicago. Todd facilitates the book discussion group, and he and his husband, Tim, regularly lead pilgrimages to the Holy Land. We also welcome Melissa Grant, who serves as director of music for the church. She and her husband, Brooke, and daughter, Fiona, live in Chicago. And we welcome Chloe Westerfield, who identifies as transgender and who recently took part in a renaming liturgy at the church. Chloe assists with marketing at the church and lives with her partner, Jillian, and their daughter, Irina. Thank you all for joining us today with this very interesting topic. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you for having us. What inspired you to facilitate a discussion on Matthew Vine's book? Well, you know, I had uh, stumbled across a YouTube video about, I think it's been about two or three years ago, uh, where Matt had actually told his story uh, about coming out. He was a student at Harvard and came home uh, during winter break, I believe it was, and came out to his, his parents and uh, wasn't received really well uh, by, um, by his parents. Uh, and so what he decided to do was do a lot of study uh, of LGBT uh, issues in the Bible, specifically around the six texts within Holy Scripture that have anything to do um, with same-sex relationships. And even though uh, the Church of the Advent and the Episcopal Church has for a long time been very affirming, uh, we still wanted to make sure that we're able to have really intelligent and uh, meaningful conversations with folks that may not be uh, on the same page as us. And so we found that this book was specifically uh, accessible uh, uh, for a lot of different people to be able to do that. I read it myself and wanted to share it uh, with the church. And so what do you hope to gain by having this ongoing discussion? I think, you know, for lack of a better term, I think Matt's whole uh, idea here, uh, he runs a project called the Reformation Project, is to make sure that folks who are affirming are able to meet people where they're at, especially the traditional evangelical view of scripture, uh, and really take a look at those six texts uh, within the Bible and have an honest conversation about what they mean, what they say, and perhaps what they don't. Uh, and to make sure that uh, the laity and clergy um, are able to have those types of conversations so we wanted to read this book and make sure that we're armed with that information. Melissa, tell me, what uh, made you decide to join in in, this, in the discussion? Well, the community that I grew up in was a fairly conservative one. And so um, even when I was in high school, I remember in Bible classes, uh, there was a very negative, not all the time, but very often a very negative um, viewpoint towards the gay community. Mm -hmm. and. Even then, before I was really interested in these issues, that just did not sit right with me. Um, I didn't like how that felt. I didn't like how that sounded. Um, and so when um, Todd was talking about doing this book discussion, I thought this would be a great opportunity to get into more of, like what Todd was saying, more of the details of the actual scripture and this um, author's arguments. And I found it really interesting and very helpful. I want to bring Chloe into our discussion. Um, tell us, Chloe, uh, how important has it been for you to be a part of the Church of the Advent? I've been in several different faith traditions since I've grown up. Um, mm -hmm. I went to a Baptist college, and then after I graduated, um, and through college I also explored a lot of different denominations, trying to find a church that really focused on scholarship and looking at what the Bible actually says, because I felt dissatisfied with the tradition I grew up in and their lack of um, actual biblical foundation for beliefs. It was more based on emotion than actually like, looking at the Bible, set, what the Bible says, and making um, a, a faith decisions on that. And so I was attracted to the Episcopal Church um, because there were so many scholars of the Bible and people I could have discussions with and really delve in 
to the scriptures with an openness mm -hmm. that you don't find in a lot of congregations. After reading the book, did you find it, what did you find in Fightful and was there anything that challenged you or anything that inspired you or? So after reading the book, I went back to a lot of conversation I'd, I'd had growing up. I remember in high school, in debates I'd had with um, other people in my church and spiritual leaders and realizing they didn't re have a lot of theological or scriptural ground to stand on. And I think that was really reinforced when I was reading the book by Matthew Vine, by how emotional the argument has become, as opposed to really looking in and saying, what are these passages that people are referring to, and why are they basing their beliefs on it, mm -hmm. and really just parsing that from there. So I, uh, you were sharing that um, you recently had a, a renaming mm -hmm. um, ceremony that occurred, and I wanted you to share with us about uh, what happened and why was that important for you? Um, so I recently went through a big change in my life, uh, legally and socially, and to me, to change my name in the church was a rebaptism of sorts. And it was profoundly emotional to me because it shows that my, not only my church, but this denomination accepts me for who I am. And and it's it's basically a way for me to open the conversation to so many people who are in different uh, denominations and faith communities who I grew up with and know to really help them to question why they believe what they believe um, because the church was so open and welcoming of who I am as a person and because it became so, it was a non-issue and that's mm -hmm. I think how it should be and it should be treated more as a celebration when you discover something about yourself and embrace that rather than something that is hidden or shameful. Wow, that's some amazing uh, insight there. Um, Todd, I'm, I'm wondering, um, after reading the book, if this impacted your marriage any, and if you could share with us. You know, it did. Um, I was uh, privileged to just be married this last May. My husband, Tim, and I got married at our church. Uh, all these people here, <laughs> except for you, were uh, at the <laughs> ceremony, of course. And uh, really, I think what's mo what impacted me most about the book um, was not so much the arguments uh, biblically um, for um, the affirmation of same-sex people. Um, those are arguments that have been long, around for a long time, but the book made them very accessible. What I gleaned from the book more than anything else was something that Melissa has already hit on, uh, and that is the importance of being able to, as a gay man, uh, be in covenant with another person. Um, you know, it's, it is wrong, and Melissa, I think you're absolutely right, for any one specific group to be, you know, uniquely excluded from uh, being in covenant with someone else. And whether uh, it's with another woman or with another man, um, God created us to be in relationship uh, with one another. And uh, so that has really been the foundation of our marriage um, is that we're, you know, I think love is a decision, right? You choose to love somebody. It's not emotional. It can be, uh, but really it is a decision to be with one another. God had said he's going to make a decision that he's going to be our God. And we're going to be his people. And I made a decision to be a husband to Tim and, and he a husband to me. So really the overarching theme of the book that really affirmed me was that sense that my marriage should be about a covenant, about being together, about a decision uh, to be together. Together. Um, marriage is, is a relationship with no exit strategy. It's, it's, <laughs> it's forever, right? Uh, or at least till death do us part. And uh, that's the biggest theme that I was able to, to take away from the book. And hopefully I uh, was able to uh, have that same theme come across in other people's lives as well, the people that you know, contributed to the discussion. Well, thank you, Todd and Melissa and Chloe for sharing your thoughts and insights with us. I'm LaShondra Stevens for Different Drummers and Greater Chicago Broadcast Ministries. Keep the faith.